welcome back to another special episode of An Adoption Story. From me connecting with my birth family, to creating a community worldwide for adoptees, I'm now sitting down with more adoptees around the world to hear their stories. And with this series, adoptees have been connecting with their family links using MyHeritage, an incredible platform that helps adoptees learn about their family trees, learn about their past, and connect more with their identity. For all of us, no journey is the same, but we all share that one thing in common, adoption. And for this story, I am meeting 25-year-old Felicita, right here in Milan, Italy. She was adopted at the age of seven months by her Italian parents from the city of Odessa, Ukraine. She was then raised in a small village overlooking the Mediterranean Sea in southern Italy. And during her childhood, Felicita had always understood that she was adopted. With her parents sharing photos and videos throughout her childhood, she started to develop a strong interest furthermore into her teenage years. For her, learning more about where she came from has always been important to her, as well as the love she carries with the family who adopted her. This is her story. I was born in uh, Odessa, in Ukraine, and uh, in 1998 I spent the first seven months of my life in an orphanage there. Then I was adopted by uh, an Italian couple, my parents, and I so I moved to Italy. Uh, I was raised in a small village in the south of Italy as an only child. After Felicita was adopted from Odessa, Ukraine, she was raised in the town of Oshea, a small beautiful village overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. With her being adopted at the age of seven months, she may not have memories from Ukraine, but she had always been aware from her parents about the first seven months of her life. Basically, I think I grew up knowing that I was adopted because my parents told me, have always told me my story, showing me photographs and films they recorded uh, when they came in Ukraine. They told me about their uh, journey, the, the train they took. <laughs> they told me about the, the city, the places they visited, the snow, the cold. <laughs> I think that my parents did a great job in, told, in telling me uh, my story since I was a little child. So I think I had the time and the opportunity to process the information, to store the details of my of story yeah. and to learn to, I think while growing, I understood, I became more aware of my origins, of my roots. For Felicita, as she grew older, she started to learn more with her being proud of where she came from. And she would always tell friends in school about the story of her beginnings in Ukraine. My childhood was peaceful, happy, and I never worried about my origins, about the fact that I was adopted. It was just a fact for me. Yeah. And I was really happy to share my experience with other children because I felt special somehow. I was like, hi, uh, I'm Felicita. I came to Italy by a plane. Wow, really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was quite nice uh, during my childhood. So you'd always talk about that during school? Yes. To the other, to your other friends? And yes. And saying, hey, in the crowd, like, hey, I'm actually, I came over here on a plane <laughs> all the way from Ukraine. Yes. Your friends must have must have sparked a bit of interest during your childhood, yes? Yes, they were um, pretty interested. Children are really curious and they ask questions without filters. So in order to uh, do not feel uncomfortable with my own story, my parents told me and explained to me everything, yes. of course, based on what they knew about my story. For any family wanting to adopt, there is always a process that is involved. And for Felicita's parents, they made sure that everything was done right. So for your parents who adopted you in Ukraine, what was the process for them prior to them actually going to Ukraine? They told me that they had to do a lot of tests 
There were social workers that came to our home in south of Italy in order to understand if the, uh, the house was uh, okay, if they were good people. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yes, the process was long, very bureaucratic heavy and they didn't decide to Ukraine for a specific reason. They were just told to go there because the, the process in the, in the country was a little bit uh, easier and quicker. My parents were told that they were going to have a child, a baby boy, but once they were in Ukraine, they received a phone call, maybe from the translator or um, an operator, I don't know exactly, yeah. but they said, um, hello, I'm sorry, I have to give you a bad news. And my mother, I think, stopped breathing for a moment because she thought, okay, we don't have any ch a child anymore. And the um, translator of the phone said, you're not going to have a baby boy, but a girl. And my mother, oh, it's not a bad news. I don't care about the gender. I don't care if it's a male or female. It's okay. When they went over in 1999, how long did it take for them to finally see you? Was it long? I think, yes, they started to search for a child years before. I do not know exactly, but yes, they waited a lot before meeting me. Within the family growing up, Felicita was an only child, and with those early questions at a young age, they all began with a sense of curiosity. And with her getting into her school years, it was still too early for her to understand the full circumstance surrounding the first seven months of her life. When I was a little girl, I always thought that I really wanted a brother or a sister and maybe a twin. I was really interested in imagining myself with a person who looks like me exactly. <laughs> you wanted to grow up with somebody with that similarity to you. Yes. Yeah, that was always it. It was an interesting idea. Yeah, was that always a thing you wanted or just thought about? Uh, I thought about it. Yeah. And then my uh, parents decided to buy me a dog <laughs> <laughs> That's a good to have company. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having a dog. Dogs are great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After learning small pieces later on during those school years, Felicita grew a proudness of where she came from. And with her links in Ukraine, she also started to learn a little more on her links from Russia. And with a passion for languages, it wasn't too long before she started to connect this with her bloodline. There were no problems with uh, adoption. During the high school, instead, I felt comfortable with my origins. I felt really proud of my Ukrainian and Russian side. In fact, I decided to learn Russian as a self-taught, uh, but it was too difficult, so I decided to focus more on the languages that I uh, already studied during that period. So I had no much time yeah. uh, for Russian, but later at university I decided to learn it uh, Properly. I think I approached Russian, the Russian language for the first time because I was really interested in learning more about my uh, culture of origin, my language, because I always thought languages in general are a point of connection to a culture. It was the reason why I chose to start learning Russian, to get closer to my roots and origins. Of course, I was too little when I was when I get adopted. So my parents didn't know the language, didn't know anything about the culture. And even though they have always been very, really open about the country where I came from, they couldn't help me in this way. But when I told them, hey, I'm trying to learn Russian, they were really supportive and they said, oh, okay, you're really passionate about languages, so it's just one more language, but I think it was not exactly the truth. For any adoptee, when learning a language that's connected with our bloodline, this helps us with our identity. Though at times, for anyone that's wanting to learn a language, it takes time and it can be a challenge. For Felicita, with what she knew already about her beginnings growing up from her parents, she knew just how important it was for her to continue that path. It's really important for any parent to be open and explain 
little pieces as you grow older about where you come from for you that must have helped so much to learn a little bit more as you grow older about your Ukrainian roots? Yes, I think it was kind of healing process, learning the language, the culture, and knowing uh, more about my uh, story while I was growing up. I think that it helped me to build my identity, uh, so it was great. You were raised in this beautiful country here, but also you have that background of inside Odessa, Ukraine, you have that, it's part of you, it makes you who you are. So I think learning the Russian language and getting yourself familiar helps you understand more about who you are exactly. Yes, uh, in fact I feel 100% Italian, but the issue is that uh, even though I come from there, I do not know anything about the, the country where I come from and it's weird because I know that I come from Odessa I knew it even before I uh, could uh, point out uh, Odessa on the, the globe. It's always like I'm uh, trying to learn more about Ukraine, Ukrainian language as well as um, Russian, uh, because I want to feel also Ukrainian. <laughs> For Felicita, she has always been proud of her Italian upbringing, as well as her roots from inside of Ukraine. And as she grew older, she's always held on to that close bond with the parents who adopted her. And with having that support by her side, as she wanted to learn more about her roots, she knows that this has always been important to her. They were really supportive. When I told them that I started learning Russian, they uh, really appreciated the fact that I was trying to get closer to my origins, even though um, they didn't realize it in the first, in the very first moment. So after you left high school, what really sparked your interest more with your connections with Ukraine? Well, when I entered university, I decided to learn uh, Russian seriously, properly, and so I decided to improve my skills in this language in order to understand my, for example, papers, because there are papers, uh, adoption papers written in uh, Ukrainian, but others in Russian. And uh, this helps me uh, to get closer to um, cultural. And during university, I had also the opportunity to meet Russian people, uh, Russian uh, professors. Thanks to them, I discovered a new world and I also felt a bit um, part of that community, even though I was raised here, so it's completely different. For the very first time in my life, I felt, uh, yes, I'm feeling a bit Russian, a bit Ukrainian, and in I think it was weird and hard to manage because it was my first time, but I felt also really satisfying of the progress I have made. The language was pretty hard at the beginning. Also the alphabet was different, but later I had this professor that helps me and also appreciated my pronunciation, <laughs> so <laughs> I felt good. really uh, good at it. With Felicita learning more about her roots, she later made that decision to start looking into her adoption papers for answers on her birth family. And with her learning more of the Russian language, she was able to begin engaging with the information, but took her own time when it came to beginning a bigger search. I always had these adoption papers and my parents always uh, told me if you want you can read uh, whenever you want or whenever you feel prepared for doing that. However, it was only in my early 20s that I decided to read my adoption papers and then I discovered my the names of my birth parents but I decided to um, not searching for them. Uh, I was okay with that. One year later after um, reading my adoption papers, I decided to to, to search for uh, the people then in order to give a shape, a face to their uh, to that names. So I decided to reach out to director of my orphanage and then I discovered uh, more um, 
I got more information about my uh, birth mother, the reason why they gave me up for adoption. And I also discovered that I had a stepbrother. When Felicita began to search for a birth family, she didn't expect to find out right away that she had a stepbrother. With learning more on the situation surrounding her birth mother, Felicita understood that this was the beginning of her putting starting pieces together. I started my search in summer 2020 and I discovered this information in December. How were you feeling during this time? Because everything must have been happening all so fast. Yeah, so it happened really fast. Well, I did my search alone. I didn't tell anyone. I prefer to keep it secret for during the whole period because I don't want that my parents, they will be really worried about me, about my expectations. But I had no expectations. I tried to prepare myself psychologically yeah. to the fact that I maybe the people that I was searching, they weren't there in Ukraine, or maybe they didn't want to have contact with me. I told my parents about my search when I felt really ready for uh, doing so. And I felt like overwhelmed at some point because I had a lot of uh, information to process. But the thing that I wanted was to get the information to find a sort of closure to my story uh, in order to understand what happened, uh, the reason why I was put into adoption. I was mm, okay with uh, knowing that. Mm. I was not searching for an immediate contact with, the, with my birth family. You just wanted those questions answered. Yes. For any adoptee wanting to do a search for birth family, we know that being prepared is important, though with how we prepare ourselves is different for every journey. We also know that with what we might expect, it can definitely be different to what we might find out. Do you feel at that time that you started to look at your adoption papers to do a search, did you feel you were prepared, you were ready to do that then, or do you think there's no right time to be prepared? I think I had the time to process what I've learned, uh, what I discovered in the adoption papers. And uh, during that year, I had the uh, opportunity to think more about my roots and to uh, be psychologically prepared for make a step forward. It's really about, I think, for anybody, including anybody in the community, anybody who's adopted, when they want to do a search, it is their choice. When they want to do a search, they need to really prepare yourself. You can either talk to a family member, talk to a close friend, but also understand that you don't know what you're going to find out. You don't know what's going to be thrown at you. It's always really important to understand that, hey, you have to have no expectations because you just have no idea what's going to happen. Time has gone so, so much since you were born. So that time thing people change people grow older people do pass away people do have information that might not be accurate but for a lot of us adoptees who want to connect it's an exciting time but also a very overwhelming and nerve-wracking time uh, yes i felt overwhelmed during uh, my search at some point uh, because i had no expectation i tried to prepare myself psychologically but of course i thought uh, what will happen next? Uh, will I find what I'm searching for? Uh, will my question be answered or not? But that time, even if it maybe it was not so much, gave me the opportunity to think more about that. And I think I mm, was prepared. I mean, I always thought that if you put a child into adoption, there's no um, beautiful story behind that. So you can expect something different. My parents always told me uh, that they, uh, my birth parents placed me in, in an orphanage because they loved me. But uh, of course, I, they, they put this in, in this way. Uh, and I always trust uh, them. Uh, these words were very meaningful for me 
but it was just when I uh, had I received the answers, when I discovered why it happened, I felt relieved. Like you're saying, a sense of closure. Yes, exactly. I felt the sense of closure. And I felt also that mm, the words uh, pronounced by my parents telling me that my birth parents loved me were true, were really meaningful at that mm, moment. I felt complete somehow. For Felicita, with getting answers on why she was placed into the orphanage, she felt a sense of feeling complete. Questions always grow as we grow older. And after she started to learn more about her birth family, she then decided to do a family history DNA test. And with using MyHeritage, Felicita learned that a lot of her bloodline from her birth family were also linked to Poland, as well as other places outside of Ukraine. She had always been told that her birth family had links not only from Ukraine, but also from Russia from her birth mother's side. But when Felicita learnt that there were also other places connected to her heritage, it took her by surprise. I discovered that I had uh, Polish origins. It was quite uh, weird because I always thought I was, I had Russian and Ukrainian origins because uh, my parents always told me that. But discovering that I also had a Polish side well, wow, interesting. <laughs> like, where did this come from? <laughs> exactly. I have also Baltic origins, a percentage of uh, Central Asia. I got surprised discovering that my mother has uh, Russian origins, even though she's Ukrainian citizen. But as far as my birth father is concerned, I'm still trying to understand more about him and about his origins. With Felicita being able to learn more about her bloodline and those links with her birth mother's side, she hopes that one day she will learn more on her birth father. And with her life here in Italy, Felicita now studies the Russian language in a university in central Milan. Not only she has been connecting more with all aspects of her origins, she also connects with others in the adoption community. I always thought that languages could be a point of connection to a uh, new culture and learning language, foreign languages, in particular Russian, gives me the chance to uh, get closer to uh, people com coming from there and of course with my birth family too. And your parents here in Italy, how are they thinking about what do they think now about you still learning Russian? Well, you know, the progress. They are really happy about it. They see my progress and they also um, support me in continuing uh, learning Russian. They think that it helps me to process my story as well, yeah. and to process the information I have discovered and learned so far. So it's uh, good having their support. That's so, that's so important to have that support. And I know also you are good friends with Marina because she is also adopted from the Ukrainian area. And so that connections with other adoptees as well as online through the community. How important do you think that is for all of us to connect like this? I think it plays a huge uh, part in my identity connecting with other adoptees because it helps me to understand more also about their stories, um, their experiences. I had also the opportunity to uh, join meetings of adoptees. They were even older than me, but uh, thanks to these meetings, I learned more about even complex situations that many of us have to manage. They gave me a lot of support. Uh, so really, it was really good to sharing our opinions and our stories. I think that uh, we can help each other by sharing our experiences. We, of course, have up and downs in relating to adoption. There are many, maybe uh, times in our lives when we don't want to talk uh, much about our experience, but maybe we are open to listen to others and maybe they are inspiring for us. And listening to others and sitting down like this and I think all of that and with you, do you think the time that you started to connect with your birth family was the right time for you? I think there is no a right time. I think you 
just feel this the need to do that. I think I I try to be prepared psychologically, but I think you can uh, face the information once you had that and you really know that if you are ready or not. I think the big part is understanding when to pursue any search if you want to and understanding that you don't do it all at once, you've got to take small steps. Yes. I won't suggest other adoptees to do this journey all alone because it's really hard, it, maybe it's overwhelming as well and it's always good to have a person that can support you. Of course you have to feel uh, you want someone that can be uh, there during your search. For Felicita, she may have done her first search by herself but knows that having support is needed for when it comes down to beginning any search. Adoptees may feel like they want to keep a search to themselves and understandably this is because of what they might find out. With all sides for any adoptee, it's always about what is most comfortable for them when making a decision on finding missing links. It was uh, hard to manage my feelings, my expectations, uh, and knowing that I had also the burden somehow of friends and parents, uh, no, I think it was too much to, to manage in a single time. But you did it the way you wanted to do that. Exactly. And you felt comfortable with that. Yes. <laughs> For anyone who is going on a journey of finding missing links, it's always about feeling comfortable with how you go on that journey. For Felicita, she continues to connect those pieces, learn more about her roots, and continue to connect with others within the community. And for herself with what's next, she knows that she'll take that extra step on her path, but only when the time is right. With your connection with your birth family that you've connected with inside Ukraine, do you hope to go and visit them one day? I really hope to do, to do this trip to Ukraine because I've never been there, so I would love to, to go visit my birth city, Odessa. I know that is a beautiful place in front of the Black Sea. So I'm really interested in discovering the places that uh, my parents uh, visited when they came to Ukraine and also had the, the photograph in there because of course I was too little. So it will be really interesting in uh, discovering and walking around. I'd like to go to the orphanage and uh, meet the people who uh, looked after me uh, when I was there. It will be really interesting, a good experience as well, uh, maybe overwhelming, but this uh, will allow me to feel more connected with my roots, I think. Felicita knows that when the time is right, she will be able to visit Ukraine. She hopes to meet those within her birth family who she had connected with and for her to learn more about her origins. And with her family by her side, she knows how important every step is, not only for herself, but also for them. And for many of us, whatever step of our journey we may be on, we know that they all always continue. Grazie, Felicita. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> it's great to be here in Italy and thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your story with me and I appreciate it because I know that these stories help so many others who are connecting not only with birth family, but connecting within the community. So thank you for that. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the chance to uh, talk about my story. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning into this beautiful episode of An Adoption Story. If you want to learn more about Felicita's story, please visit the links below. So this area here, we around the back of the Navelli. You can see how quiet it is here, right? Completely different from the front side. <laughs> so it's completely quiet, completely different. I know that with me seeing all this, taking it in, I can give you a, a really good example. With me, being in New Zealand, I'm so used to my home back there, you know? And for a lot of people that go and travel to my country, they're so amazed and they're, but I'm so used to it. You must feel that sense of, oh, I'm used to this. Yeah, um, sometimes we take it for granted, but uh, living here in Milan, I think it's nice to be, um, to have all 
to experience also quite um, relaxing places yeah. it's really cool and I like it it's a way to um, have relax have a relaxed time yeah relaxed it's time. well it's it's a lot quieter here yeah. I think it's so much nicer and down here we've got all this here I saw some I saw a cat before as well a lot of art galleries all around here it's very old-fashioned isn't it it's yeah a, yeah so much to take in and so much to take an all-in-one go I think for myself especially with all the stories that I've been doing I can tell you one thing with going through America the American culture is a little similar to New Zealand but then there's a European culture which is always very different in every different country I love the American culture and I'm I'm sort of raised learning about the American culture but I was never raised learning about the Italian culture so for me seeing this is almost like a culture shock <laughs> to a certain point Odessa was for example um there are there were many French architectures, but also um, Italians. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the history really is so strong. Yeah, and there was also a um, musician that uh, an Italian musician from uh, Naples that um, wrote uh, a song, uh, "O Sole Mio." O which, Sole Mio. Yeah, which is uh, which was dedicated to Odessa. It's so cool. I did yeah. not. I did not know that. See, I did not know that. I think all of this, taking it in, you've got some links on both sides. Yeah, there. actually, yeah. Some links that are very, they're actually connected somehow. And it is widespread here in Italy, well-known song yeah. here in Italy. It's yeah. so awesome. Especially in the south. So yeah. you, next time when you go to Odessa, there'll be places and things that you'll recognize <laughs> yeah. from what you've learned here. Yeah.